In this video, we're going to talk simply about why I think the WJ Grand Cherokee, the one from the early 2000s, is the best Grand Cherokee they've ever made. And to demonstrate that, I've brought along two others, a 2021 and a brand new 2022. Let's get right into it. This Grand Cherokee is called a WJ. It's actually a second generation Grand Cherokee. Now the first one, the ZJ, was sold in the 1990s. This one started production in the late 90s, went through 2004. Now we're missing a model called the WK1. That was like the Daimler era of Jeep. And then the newest ones are the WK2, and then of course the WL. Now these Grand Cherokees are dirt cheap on Craigslist now. They're like two to $4,000. Of course, new they were much more expensive, but incredible value by today's standards. And at the end of this video, I'm actually gonna share a really unique fact that every Grand Cherokee has in common, which you probably didn't know. Now this is the current generation of Grand Cherokee, the WK2, and it's been around since like 2009 or something, 2010, so it's a super long-lived model. So the price on this one, even in 2021, $53,000, that's the MSRP, so this is an expensive vehicle. And that brings us to the newest generation of Grand Cherokee. This is called the WL, it's brand new for 2022. And an interesting thing about this Jeep, it's the first time the Grand Cherokee's been offered in both a two-row and a three-row. The three-row is called the L, this is the two-row, it's just a standard Grand Cherokee. Now these have gotten very, very expensive. Now they start like just under $40,000, but this one, as you see it, $63,000. So 10K more than the blue one next to me. Driving the old Grand Cherokee, you quickly realize the magic of what makes these vehicles so special. You see, they do have solid axles, so they have huge amounts of off-road capability. However, unlike an old Wrangler or unlike an old Defender, these don't ride like a wheelbarrow. They are extremely soft and compliant and will dampen and they're not terrible on the road and they're still very good off-road and they still flex pretty decently. This vehicle, unlike pretty much any other on the market, has an incredible basis of old-school off-road equipment mixed with modern-day refinement and that really is the true magic in these Grand Cherokees. Now the new ones, they ride incredibly well with the independent suspension and they do have quicker steering and they're more controlled on the road, especially in the twisties. However, when you get them off-road, they do struggle a little bit in terms of articulation, especially with the air suspension. And then the aftermarket potential just really isn't there like these old ones. For just a couple hundred dollars, you can put a decent lift kit on one of these old Grand Cherokees and then put really big tires on them, make them look insanely cool and take them places you just wouldn't believe. With the fully independent systems, you can lift them. It is possible, but especially with the air ride, it gets really tricky. Now, one of the reasons that this WJ is my favorite generation of Grand Cherokee are the engine options. So, this is a 4.7 liter V8, 230 horsepower. Nothing all that insane from a power standpoint. However, they are extremely long lasting engines. This Jeep, 230,000 miles on its original engine. I don't think the heads have ever been off of it. They just keep trucking and trucking and trucking. And that's before you get to the entry level engine in 2001. That would have been a four liter straight six, which is the cockroach of the Jeep engine world. 195 horsepower, but those engines, they seriously will last three, 350, 400,000 miles between rebuilds. I know Nissan Toyota gets all the fanfare for being long lived and reliable, but these old Grand Cherokees, they last an insanely long time. One of the interesting choices Jeep made for the newest Grand Cherokees is that they use the same engines. So be it this WK2 or this WL, they have the same exact engine options, at least currently. So on the base end of the spectrum is this, the 3.6 liter V6, the Pentastar V6, about 293 horsepower. Now the optional engine on both of these is this, the 5.7 liter V8. So it's a liter more than that old Grand Cherokee. It's a Hemi, so it's got hemispherical heads. 357 horsepower. Very interesting though that on the newest generation they didn't totally change up the engine. Now there is like a plug-in hybrid coming, but these are the volume leaders on these models. They're both good engines and I have heard stories of both of these lasting a really long time, but when it comes to longevity, <laughs> the four liter Jeep straight six that you find in the old one, I just can't be beaten. So now we come to my favorite feature on these old WJ Grand Cherokees. This was the last Grand Cherokee that had solid axles, just like a Wrangler, just like a Land Rover Defender from like the 80s, and just like a Roman ox cart. But for real, the solid axles make these insanely good off-road. Tons and tons of articulation, extremely rugged, very affordable to modify. They just last a really long time as well. So 
coil sprung though, so they ride really, really well. Now, one of the funny things about the drivetrains on these old WJ Grand Cherokees, they had five speed automatics, but depending on the year, your software may only have four of those speeds unlocked, which is kind of funny. Now, the new models behind me, they've gone to fully independent suspension on all four corners. So the stick axles are gone, replaced by independent units on all four corners. Eight speed automatic transmissions in both of those. Now the the ride quality on the road has gotten much, much better with the new ones. However, off-road, I still think ride quality is king on the old ones. Now the big shock with the WJ Grand Cherokee is really the overall luxuriousness in kind of the best old school American sort of way. So they have these incredibly soft and plushy loungers. They are like lazy boys. They've got heated seats that will roast your butt off. They have um, pretty functional heating and AC systems for the most part. So it's not luxurious in the sense that, oh, it's got big screens and it's got crazy cameras, but it's luxurious in the sense that you can just lean back and kind of waft along. And that is something definitely missing in vehicles and especially modern SUVs. The next thing that I love about the old WJ Grand Cherokee over the new ones is the size and the interior volume. So length, this thing is some eight inches shorter than the 2021 and like 12 inches shorter than the 2022. However, on the interior, you've got tons and tons and tons of space, which is really, really cool. So lots of amazing packaging. Now the interior design on this is certainly looking a little bit dated. However, very functional, simple knobs, very clear, easy to use gauges. Depending on the trim, you might have automatic climate control, heated seats. Once again, very well made, 100, 230,000 miles on this car. Everything's held up very well. So maybe not fancy, but extremely durable. Now as we step into the 2021 Grand Cherokee, a lot has changed specifically with the technology. So I've got a big digital screen here for the instrument cluster, of course the 8.4 inch screen for the center cluster. I have push button start, so a lot more technology, but interestingly enough, I wouldn't call this like a luxury experience. It still is very blocky, it's very simple in its usability, and it feels very rugged as well. So the materials, um, they're not super soft touch, not crazy leather dashes, nothing like that. Still very usable, very utilitarian, albeit with a lot more tech. One interesting feature that both of the new Grand Cherokees have is the select terrain mode. So you've got auto, mud, rock, sand, snow in this 2021, and then the low range now is a button instead of a leather lever, and we also have air suspension on both of these, so we can raise and lower depending on the terrain. Now as you make your way into the new Jeep Grand Cherokee, it becomes very apparent that they've taken this vehicle up market in a big way. And this is not even like a summit or summit reserve. This is just an overland trim, but like everything you touched is now stitched. Lots and lots of leather, leather across the dashboard, wood everywhere. I mean, this is much more like a Mercedes BMW Lexus level of refinement than even the 2021 model. And then from a tech standpoint too, we have like this giant screen as an instrument cluster, no more physical gauges. We've got this big screen in the middle here. We have heated, ventilated seats. We have massaging seats for goodness sake, adaptive cruise control. I mean, it's just insane the amount of tech in this new one, which is a good and a bad thing. I think that it's great you're getting a lot of tech for your $63,000. However, I also feel like the Grand Cherokee has been um, kind of softened up a little bit. This is much more luxurious than the previous generation. It feels more like a luxury car and you feel bad getting all of this nice fancy screen and leather dirty. Uh, in terms of off-road gear, we still have the uh, different terrain modes down here, so the air suspension, but of course the shifter is now a knob um, and all the toggles are beautifully made. Now from an engine standpoint, this 4.7 liter V8 is an absolute peach. 227,948 miles and it runs beautifully. I don't think the heads have ever been off the engine. I don't think it's ever been out of the car. It doesn't overheat. It pulls strong. It sounds pretty good, especially with an exhaust. Of course, people do like to hate on Jeep for their perhaps perceived reliability. However, a four liter Grand Cherokee is an incredibly long lived vehicle. And that's why you often see these on Craigslist with like 250, 280,000 miles. They just keep going. Now the transmissions are a slightly bigger weak spot. The V8s were better. However, I did have to replace the torque converter on this car, uh, but it shifts beautifully now. Four wheel drive works for the most part. And <laughs> you just can keep trucking these things for years and years and years to come. Over the years, the Grand Cherokee's gotten much more refined, much more luxurious, much better on-road, but for the ultimate balance of off-road capability, ease of maintenance, ease of modification, the WJ is hard to beat. Now that one tidbit of information, I didn't want you to know at the beginning, did you know 
that every Grand Cherokee, regardless whether it was a first gen ZJ or the brand new WL, have always been unibody. So if you think that unibodies can't go off road, oh boy are you wrong, because unibody construction can be really tough as the Grand Cherokee has proven for well over 20 years. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. As always, this has been Tommy with TFL Classics. Check out TFL Car and TFLTruck.com for the latest and greatest in Grand Cherokee old versus new reviews.